I want to talk about a couple of interesting uh, scriptures that uh, I just happened to be reading in today. Um, nothing out of the Book of Mormon, unfortunately, that that came to my mind. I, although I read in there, uh, just the, well, I, I'll, I will say this: the fascinating thing for me with the Book of Mormon, especially this part where we transition from uh, Nephi to Jacob. And then, and then you have all those small books, you know, you have Enos and then all the other books that give us the tie-in of the Mulekites coming in and establishing Zarahemla that came at the time of King Zedekiah and then, and then Messiah that, uh, from the Nephites that met up with them and they learned that they came from the same place and they were so thrilled that they had the brass plates. These are really fascinating uh, aspects of the Book of Mormon that um, I just love because the intricacy, there's no way Joseph could have figured all that out, in my opinion. And so I think it's, it's that part, it was really interesting. So that's what I got through today. So now I'm gonna be starting in the book of Mosiah and we'll see, we'll see what happens there. But here's, here's something I read. I was actually in the book of Acts. I was in Acts chapter two, verse seven. And for some reason, I'd never made this, this uh, cross-reference. Actually, uh, Acts chapter 2, verse 17. 2, 17. So a lot of people, um, I've, seen, I've seen pictures of the day of Pentecost uh, by picture, uh, uh, artist renditions of the day of Pentecost. And it's, it's, it's usually by a big river, and it almost looks like, oh, maybe it's the Jordan River, that the, the day of Pentecost. But no, it was actually right in Jerusalem. And probably just off the Temple Mount where there were some pools, cleansing pools and whatnot. So it's interesting that just because we have an artist rendition, we automatically think of the countryside and a river and the only river of any size in that area is the the, the Kidron Valley, isn't it? Uh, that's a small spring, but the but the uh, the Jordan River. So we we uh, at least I grew up thinking that's where the day of Pentecost took, where all these people were baptized in the Holy Spirit and all that. It was probably right. Well, not probably. It was right in Jerusalem. So I was reading about that, and it was uh, I was reflecting on that, and then I hit this this. Uh, <laughs> This verse, these verses, um, it, it, so Acts chapter 2, verse 17, and boom, the light went on. Okay, and it shall come to pass in the last days, boy, does that jump out, saith God, I will pour out my spirit upon all flesh. Now think of that. He'll pour out his spirit upon all flesh. That's a pretty powerful statement. And your sons and your daughters shall prophesy. And, and, young, and your young men shall see visions, and your old men shall dream dreams. This is starting to sound familiar. And on my servants and on my handmaids, I will pour out in those days of my spirit, and they shall prophesy. Now, I think those, that, those verses give us a clue when it says his spirit will be poured out upon all flesh. I, this is just me personally. I, I think what the Lord is saying here and what, uh, what the apostles in the writing this down, I think what, uh, is it Luke that wrote the book of Acts? I can't remember now. But anyway, I, I think they're talking to the church that the, 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 the spirit will be available and will be on all the flesh that seek it. Okay? So you'll have you'll have your daughters, your young men, your old men, they'll dream dreams. And on my servants and on my handmaids, I will pour out in those days of my spirit and they shall prophesy. This is really cool. And I think you're probably you guys are well, smarter at this than I am, and you're going, hey, that sounds a lot like another scripture, which we'll go to here in just a second. And I will show wonders in heaven above and signs in the earth beneath, 
blood and fire and vapor of smoke. Hmm. The sun shall be turned into darkness and the moon into blood before that great and notable or um, uh, the great and dreadful day of the Lord come. And it shall come to pass that whosoever shall call on the name of the Lord shall be saved. So here we transition right into the second coming and the events that precede the second coming. So now let's go, and this is where you, you're all going, hey, that sounds a lot like Joel in the Old Testament. So here we are towards the end of the Old Testament and all these awesome prophets that, that just hammer the, the, the prophecy home of, of the Messiah. So this is Joel chapter two, verse 28. And it shall come to pass afterward that I will pour out my spirit upon all flesh and your sons and your daughters shall prophesy. Your old men shall dream dreams. Your young men shall see visions. And also upon the servant and upon the handmaids in those days will I pour out my spirit. It's almost identical. There's a little difference. And I will show wonders in the heavens and in the earth, blood and fire and pillars of smoke. The sun shall be turned into darkness and the moon into blood before that great and terrible day of the Lord. And it shall come to pass that whosoever shall call on the name of the Lord shall be delivered. For, for in Mount Zion and in Jerusalem. So a lot of um, modern day prophets um, since the time of uh, Joseph Smith and, and beyond, would, would say that Mount Zion, I, I shouldn't say prophets necessarily, but um, apostles or prophets, have said that Mount Zion is the new Jerusalem, and, and, then, and, in, in, and then in Jerusalem shall be, deliver, shall be deliverance, as the Lord hath said, and in the remnant whom the Lord shall call. So there's this word remnant. And if you look at the footnote remnant, um, it says a remnant of Israel. So we've been talking about a remnant. So this is all going to take place, right? Joel. Now, here it becomes even more interesting. Uh, well, before I get to the more interesting, this is even really interesting. So let's go to the Joseph Smith history now. And this is when the angel Moroni came. And we know that the, the words of Malachi, uh, we have those pretty well memorized. But then uh, some people miss this. He also quoted, this is Joseph Smith's history, and he's talking about the angel Moroni. And not only did he quote Malachi, but he also quoted the second chapter of Joel from the 28th verse to the last. It's what I just read. So 28 through 32. He quoted that. The 28th verse to the last. He also said that this was not yet fulfilled, but was soon to be. How cool is that? And he further stated that the fullness of the Gentile was soon to come in, he quoted many other passages of scripture and, and offered many explanations which cannot be mentioned here. <laughs> I love that. <laughs> oh, Joseph Smith, what a tease. Um, but, but it's awesome. So, But at least he mentioned Joel. Now, here comes the last thing I wanted to mention about this. And many of you already know this, but on the... Uh, 2001, October, so we had just had 9-11, okay, September, we just had 9-11, we were all humbled. If you were too young to remember that um, from, from an older guy that was right in the middle of life, um, 2001, you know, um, 20, 20 plus years ago, um, I was in my 40s. I might have even had some hair back then, but I can't remember. But anyway, I remember having some young kids at home, older kids getting older now and uh, busy working and church callings and all those things. And I remember that morning of 9-11 and it had a huge impact on everybody in the United States. Um, 
I always say that country music is the great barometer of what's happening. And out of 9-11 came these great family songs and patriotic songs, and it was awesome. And that lasted about a year or two, and then it, it got back to, uh, uh, <clears throat> you know, the, the, the bars and the relationships and, and all the, all the other things that, that go along with, with the, the barometer of country music. <laughs> so, um, it didn't last too long, but for that time period, there's some pretty sweet music that came out of there. Um, and now we're back. So I, I always go, well, what's the latest, what's the most popular country music right now? And that's pretty much a reflection of, of the nature of our country right now. I could be wrong, but that's that's what I go. Okay, but at that conference, 2001, October, President Hinckley said that this prophecy of Joel had been fulfilled. Wow, wow, wow. And it gives the reference in that conference talk of those verses. Wow, wow. So you have a lot of things. You have the, the, uh, the outpouring of the Spirit, you have sons and daughters and old men and maidens and people and, and leaders receiving a spiritual witnesses of things. Um, and, and you know, I, I reflect back on that and I think that's absolutely true. We were humbled enough to, to go, hey, <laughs> I need to figure out some things. Because prior to that, it was, it was always like, you know what, you don't need to really worry about it. Just follow the prophet and you'll be okay. And, and really from that point on, it seemed to be more of, you, you better have your own act together. Uh, obviously follow the prophet, but you better get your own witness and figure this out for yourself and do it because you want to do it, not because you're like, now oh, I'll do, you know, I'll follow the prophet and do, do what he said. So it was kind of a shift at, at that point. Um, because of the conditions and, and things that were going on in the world with all the events of 9-11. I will show wonders in the heavens and in the earth. Since that time, we have had eclipses. We've, we had the Virgo giving birth. We've had more earthquakes. You can look it up. Just Google it or duck, duck, go it, and you'll see the escalation of earthquakes since this time. Um, uh, blood and fire and pillars of smoke, that could be directly attached to the attack of 9-11. Other things going on. The sun shall be turned in, into darkness. Now, you know, sometimes I wonder about that. Um, we could talk about an eclipse. We could talk about pollution. We could talk about S-O-N versus S-U-N, that people will turn away from him and there'll be wickedness. So there's a lot of, a lot of things attached to that. I, I'm, I'll just flat out say I, I don't really know other than I know that President Hinckley said that, that this has been fulfilled. The great and terrible day of the Lord come. So, so we have it from Old Testament, Joel. We have it in the New Testament, Book of Acts. Then we have it in the history of Joseph Smith, who said that the angel Moroni said, it's not fulfilled yet, but it soon will be. Now, how cool is that? And then we have a modern day prophet 20 plus years ago say, it's done. This is it. This is when this has been fulfilled. This is, this is exciting. It's interesting. It should be contemplated. Um, I, again, I'm not a timeline guy. I've said that over and over again. I like to hear them and read them and think about it, um, but the brain just doesn't comprehend it, and I, and I, I'm not really uh, comfortable in in saying, "Oh, I really that timeline feels good to me," or this timeline. Um, I'm not against them. I just don't. I, I it's just not my thing. But this is because it's. You know, when you see three witnesses, <laughs> think of, you know, the power of three. We've talked about that before on this channel. So we have the witness. This is actually four witnesses because we have the witness in Joel. We have the witness in the book of Acts. We have the witness in 
the Joseph Smith history, which is in the Pearl of Great Price, which is scripture. And then we have a modern day version of not necessarily reading that scripture, but saying that prophecy had been fulfilled. I actually think he did read it. He did. He did. So, so, now, so then we have a confirmation, and it's our prophet, and it's at conference. So this is a forewitness of this event. And I also like it that, that we have the remnant whom the Lord shall call as being fulfilled. So this is, this is really uh, good stuff, good stuff. So um, I hope you get as excited as I do when, when, you know, I've read that in the book of Acts before, but for some reason, I probably didn't really equate it with the book of Joel and, you know, but, but as we continue to study and we, as we see things, we put these puzzles together and the Lord is doing it through the Holy Spirit saying, look, I'm giving you all this evidence that things have happened. So ar around the year 2000, <laughs> we had a lot of things. We had, um, for, first we had dedication of the uh, Palmyra temple, I, I believe. Um, and then, uh, oh gosh, I can't remember the two temples that were back to back. You guys remember them. One was was more of a North American uh, uh, um, broadcast, and then the other one was worldwide. And and there's some scriptures, and we know them, that that really tie into the fact that that the Hosanna shout and the palm leaves were the and that the, there were the number would were numberless that that were witnessing this, and the palm leaves are, are the white hanky you know, doing the Hosanna shout uh, is represented by the hanky. So we have, we have some really interesting things that happened. Then we had 9-11. So we have, we have several events um, that really um, point the finger towards uh, a change. And Personally, I think it's the it was the opening of the seventh seal. The the dates figure, you know, the the thousand years, it's two thousand years since Christ. You know, it's not not too hard to figure it out. But um, you know, but regardless, that it was a it was a hinge point. Let's say that's been used a lot by by the brethren. Uh, that phrase hinge point, and and right around the year two thousand two thousand one, there were definite hinge points. Okay. So, so these are these are some interesting things um, that um, that just came together today, and I love it. Now, just on a side note, an interesting thing: um, uh, <laughs> I had an individual send me a link to uh, um, it's a Book of Mormon evidence website, and so it's. Uh, uh, Rod Meldrum, and I guess I was mentioned. I don't guess. I saw I was mentioned in there, and not you know necessarily derogatory, but kind of about my post about what's happening on the southern border, possibility that this could be a fulfillment of prophecy that Christ Himself gave about the the young lion tearing into pieces the Gentile nation and the Gentiles when they become wicked, and. Uh, you know, I was pretty well scoffed at in that article. I'll put the link up just so you can see it. Um, um, I'll put it in the comment section. That's where I'll put it. I'll put it in the comment section and then I'll pin it so it's up above um, so you can see that. Might take me a minute to get that, find it again. But um, yeah, so that's that's the kind of thing I deal with now. It's kind of interesting, um, you know, what happens here. I want to end with these last chat, the last two verses in the book of Joel. But Judah shall dwell forever, and Jerusalem from generation to generation. For I will cleanse their blood that I have not cleansed, for the Lord dwelleth in Zion. I love that. I love that. Um, you can compare that with Amos 9, 14 through 15. I won't read that one, but that's a... Amos 9, 14 through 15. But Judah, and then this is Joel again. I just have to read it again. But Judah shall dwell forever, and Jerusalem from generation to generation. 
for I will cleanse their blood that I have not cleansed, for the Lord dwelleth in Zion. <sighs> Israel's having their elections today, and we'll find out in a day or two what's going to happen there. God bless you all. You're awesome, wonderful. Love you all. Um, I don't mind the the uh, comments that are, um, you know, where you don't agree. It's all good. It, it really is. We're all, um, we all are looking out for each other. These are some very fascinating and interesting times. And puzzle pieces are being put together almost on a daily basis. Um, we've had some horrific events uh, throughout the world. You're just going to have to do your best to try to find out what's going on. Spain had some interesting things uh, today where large groups of people rebelled against the enforcement over masks and all these things. And they, the people were yelling, there's more of us than of you to pointing to the, to the law enforcement, you know, trying to enforce these crazy laws. And, uh, it's, it's, <laughs> it's, it's powerful. A lot of things going on. So that's it. You guys are awesome. Talk to you soon. Bye.